The two-point perspective drawing always starts with the horizon line parallel to the top and the bottom of the paper, drawn lightly because you won't always need it. Vanishing points at the far ends, points A, point B. And then the first uh, building I'll start with, I won't be able to see the top or the bottom, so it would be considered eye level in some ways. So it's a vertical line that goes right through the, intersects the horizon line. Then I use my ruler to draw a line from the bottom of it to point A. And you notice as I'm going back toward the point, I fade the line because I'm not going to need all of it later. And from the top to point A. And then we have to go to point B. From the bottom of it to point B. And then from the top of it to point B. So we have basically five lines, vertical and then the converging lines going to A and B. Now I'll establish my back corners. The lines have to be parallel to the vertical line that I started with. Meaning that it can't uh, slant toward the other one. It has to stay the same distance apart all the way, no matter how long it gets. As I go along, I'll erase the lines or portions of lines that I no longer need. Now I'm going to draw a series of parallel lines on side A, and they're all going to go to point A. They're all going to converge with point A. So the lines on side A always converge with point A. Now I'm going to use them to draw windows in perspective. So basically I fit the window right in two of those lines and I make sure that the sides of the window are vertical lines. And I try to make them the same size or appearing to get more narrow as they get smaller. I'm even going to use the lines that I drew, the converging lines, to uh, make the cross pieces of the windows. Now I'll make another row of them. Since I drew a series of uh, light converging lines, it makes it very easy to just draw these windows in perspective. I just fit them in between the lines and make sure that the top and bottom follow the lines. On the bottom I'm going to add a couple of glass doors, like the big glass doors that you see in stores. And I'm having the top of that follow converging line to A. And I'll add two big windows, one on each side. And the tops of those, I'll follow the converging line to A. And then uh, since they're doors and they're, they go down to the ground level and the windows do down there, I just use the same line that I used for the bottom of the building for the perspective line. Now on side B, I'll draw a series of converging lines and I'll draw them lightly as well. And that'll be the guidelines for putting in my windows on this side. But the key word is light. You have to do them lightly. And I'll just fit my windows right in. I put the vertical line for the windows. I just fit it right in between the converging lines. And I use the converging lines to draw my horizontal lines on. And uh, I just work my way down. The lines on uh, side A always have to converge with A, and the lines on side B always have to converge with point B. So here's the first building. And you'll probably want to darken in your windows and doors so that they look more realistic. Looks like they're actually going back into something. 
One thing I really want to keep up on is to erase the lines that I no longer need. And as long as I have the two vanishing points, I don't even need the horizon line. So that can go too. So my next building is going to be taller. It's going to come up way above eye level. And I'll make a vertical line that goes right down to the same converging line I used for the bottom of the other building. Because they're going to be standing in a row on a street. And then you can probably guess what I do next besides brush away my eraser shavings. I line A up with the top and bottom of the line. And there's already the bottom line over there from the first building. And then top B with the top of the line and with the bottom of the line. Only you can see just a small piece of it to the left of that building. So I stop and jump over and I finish my line. Now I'll decide how big to make the building by uh, drawing a vertical line where I want the back quarter to be and it has to be parallel with the corner I just drew. And let's see, I'm not sure how big I want this. Okay, but I do want it parallel to the corner line. Okay, so there's another building. This next building will be quite a bit shorter. It'll be actually below eye level, at least the top of it will be, like you can look down and see the top. So a vertical line always that we start with, and it doesn't come all the way up to the vanishing point. Then make the converging lines to point A with the top of that line. Make sure it goes back to A. And then B. And then back to A again. To the bottom of the line, lining it up with A. And then I go over to side B again and make a parallel or vertical line. And we'll be able to see just a slight top of this building. So the opposite line I line up with point A. So point A gets the corner farthest from it. There's not really very far to draw this line. So there's the line and I'll just make a ghost line up to point A. And then point B I have to just uh, estimate where the corner would be behind that other building and draw a line back from that. So the process for drawing these buildings is basically the same. So you start with your vertical line and then you have the converging lines that go back to A and then go back to B and more vertical lines for the back corners. So this I'm going to speed up right now so that uh, you can get through and watch where I get all of the buildings down without it having to take a long time. Actually, I could put more buildings in, but I think this gives you the idea of what's needed anyway. So vertical lines for the back corners. And I'm going to draw something that appears to be above or sitting on top of this building here. So I made my vertical line and then I have to line it up with the top and basically the top of the line with uh, A and B. Okay, after making these initial buildings, then uh, I'm going to make the road. And so the way I do that is to start at point A and then I run my ruler down so that it's uh, the distance I want it to be 
between that line and that first store building. And then I decide how wide I want the road to be at the bottom, and I draw the line between that area and the vanishing point. And now I'm going to go along here. You notice I'm leaving room between the, the rulers and the structures because um, that'll be the sidewalk. Then I decide on the distance for the width of my road and uh, I draw the lines up to point B. Little line here because it's going to be the vertical line that is um, the corner of the curb. And then line that up with the vanishing point on A. And then line it up with B. And you have a curb. And then I'll continue that by uh, making another vertical line and uh, drawing down from point A. And then I'll erase some of these lines that I don't need anymore. Doing a lot of erasing as I go along it just makes everything less confusing. If I put some buildings down here, you'll be able to see the tops. So for the sake of that, I'm going to put some buildings down there. It's way over to the side, close to the vanishing point A. And those lines are going to seem way too angled, but they're really not. As long as the line can be traced back to the vanishing point, it's correct, even if it doesn't look like it. So now the viewpoint, you notice that they're a lot less of a steep angle, and that's because it's really, really close to the vanishing point A, but not B. That's how I fade my lines out so that I don't have to erase as much. Make sure that you keep the second line parallel to the first one, and it works really well if you line your ruler up along the first one and then carefully slide it over and make sure that they stay parallel. This will be different because you'll see the top of it so I'm going to line up A with the line that's on the B side and then I'm going to line up B with a line that's on the A side and uh, the way you can tell that it's correct is it makes a polygon, like a four-sided polygon. And as long as it goes back to the A or the B, you know it's correct. I want to keep the buildings at the same level because they're going to be along the sidewalk. So I'm making that guideline back to B. And then I'll continue. And you remember how I did the overlapping buildings when I did the other ones above these. And it's basically the same thing. You always start with a corner that's closest to you and then line up the top and bottom with the vanishing points A and B. And you can see how easy it is to get the rulers slid into the wrong place. I was adjusting it quite a bit there. Now this is the bottom of the line to A but not much will be seen. You just have to be able to trace back to the vanishing point. So I fade my lines out a lot. And then over to um, B. And see how I'm sliding it until I get it perfectly situated. And then I fade my lines out as I move back toward the point. When you're doing perspective drawing, it's a good idea to learn how to do that. Just how to draw and then fade your lines out as it gets to the point where you're not going to need them for the final drawing. So now I bet you can figure out the next step. Make a line that's parallel. And then move over and on the other side of the first line, make a line that's parallel on the B side. By now this should be pretty familiar to you. So see how I'm lining up that uh, corner with A now 
and how careful I am, am to try to get it so it actually lines up with A. And then the same thing with B over here. Real important to pay attention to that because it's really easy for it to slide out of place. Okay, so now I have the basic buildings, but I have some lines that I need to erase. I won't be able to see the road through that building, so I'm going to erase that line and uh, try to erase any other lines that I don't need at this point. An easy way to draw a series of windows on these buildings and have them correctly perspective is to just first draw a series of very light lines. So on the B side of the building, I draw some very light lines across those buildings back to B. And I always make sure that the vanishing point stays on B as I slide my ruler down to the next lines. I'll be using these lines to guide me in my placement of the top and bottoms of the windows or doors that I put in these buildings. So it's real important to keep in mind that they have to be really light. And once you get clear of those buildings, you'll want to really fade the lines out a lot. Now the vertical line of the side of the building that's closest to that corner, and I draw it the size I want that window to be, and I put it in between two of the lines, and then I continue up and put the next window within the same two lines. I've decided to do arches this time. So the thing to remember is to make sure that the sides of the window are parallel to the sides of the building and that you keep in a row of windows the top and bottom of the windows within the same two lines. And then they'll get smaller like they're supposed to. And then you can just conveniently move down to the next building. And since you have those converging lines already there, all you need to do is supply your vertical lines and then also just kind of outline the opening. There's the door. And so this one building will be a little bit different. And I always keep my openings within the converging lines. That's the thing to remember too. So I'm not just drawing them in here randomly. I'm actually keeping them within a certain space. And I want openings and windows on the other sides of the buildings too, so I have to go over to vanishing point A, and I have to do the same thing. I have to make a series of very, very light converging lines that just go across the side of the building and to the point that's on that side. It really doesn't matter if anybody else can see those lines as long as you can because you use those for your guides. So just move my way down, make sure that ruler is always on that vanishing point. It is so easy to forget and just let it slide and then you have everything all messed up. So these are important. And then you just follow the same thing like I was doing on the other side of the building. So then I'll just fast forward through this because you've seen me do that. I just want you to see it, but in a short amount of time. Then take some time to clean up all of the lines that you no longer need. Erase them and put back in any lines that you accidentally erased. And then the converging lines, since they're going over the top of the buildings that are above the other buildings with the windows, can be easily used to make windows and doors in all of the other buildings and it's really fun and easy because you don't have to draw the converging lines. They're already there. You just have to put the verticals in and then you have to draw the top and bottom of that opening on the converging lines that you're using. 
you can do it with all of those and it would be just really cool. Now I'll show you how to make a fence in two-point perspective. Not that you really have to do that in this project, but might as well know how. So I'm going from point A to make where the bottom of the fence will be. And then here I'm going to draw a fence post about as tall as I want it to be, right there. On the right hand side of them, it's going to get bigger. Then I align my ruler up with A right across the top of that fence post and then I draw my line down on the B side of the fence post because that's where the fence is going to go in that lot over there. Then I draw fence posts to fit in between those lines and they should get gradually bigger as we go along because things appear to be bigger when they're closer. I wasn't really sure what kind of a fence I wanted to make but I decided to just make cross members like it would be a wood fence only it probably wouldn't in town. It might be a wire fence. But I have to have my ruler on A and then I have to line it up so that it's just below the fence post top because that's where it would start. And then following my ruler I just draw the lines of the cross members and you can see that I'm actually um, skipping over the fence posts. I'm not putting a space between that and the fence posts but I'm skipping over them. So there's a fence there. And now I'll show you how to make the fence going back this other way. So I go to point B now and I draw a line back from the fence post top to point B. Then I go to the fence post bottom and I line it up with point B. And then I draw a line to point B. The fence posts have to fit in between these two lines and they have to be vertical. And you'll notice that the size change is more dramatic this time. They're getting smaller and smaller, quicker and quicker, and they should be getting closer together appearing as they get closer to the vanishing point. And now I'm going to draw my cross members and that is a little harder, smaller, But when I do this, I always line it up with B, draw between the fence posts. It's a lot harder because by the time they get up to point B, they pretty much all converge together. And I should probably have my pencil with a finer tip, but that probably wouldn't even make that much difference. The point is that by the time it gets back to point B it's tiny <laughs> and so there's my fence and I don't know I mean it could be a ballpark or it could be a big fence around a zoo or something. Anyway that's how to do some of that and all you need to do is use those same techniques and you can finish off a city. You don't have to draw one that looks exactly like mine obviously. Erase all of your unneeded lines before you do anything else.